heard a, a memory in the same way that you might inherit a, a genetic form. Uh, I'm sure it's physically impossible, but some people think they might have had such an experience before. This is called the sculpture. <coughs> Angus sat in his workshop with his lime green overall, staring at his new creation. He was quite pleased with himself as he began to give it its final finished texture by poking with fingers and running his nails across the surface. He had lived for almost a year now, neglecting his health, forgetting to eat or wash, such was his obsession. His smell annoyed no one, of course. Angus had lived alone for years now. He said people only dampened his creativity, and besides, his social skills, if he ever had any, were long gone. Being alone had made him, and his art was reflected by it. He opened a curtain to let in some light, then sat back to look at his work. Never had a project stirred, stirred this much enthusiasm, so intense was his passion, a little else filled his mind. He felt, that it already, he felt that it may already have a name, but so elusive was it, but for now it remained nameless. From the start he had had the shape in his head, a sort of inverted line of lightning with a thick base rising to head height, then many smaller pieces with ever decreasing body going off in all directions. He had calculated the need for great strength throughout, and so had used graphene to form the internal skeleton, and then built up the body with clay. Eventually, on the 1st of May, his great work was recognised, and he had been greatly honoured by seeing it installed in the local gallery. The mind-bombing array of textures and twisting and turning of its form seemed strangely familiar to his audience, but any glimmer of recognition was never spoken of for fear of being labelled mad. Just lately, people had disappeared for less, and so the critics and art lovers left with their eyes cast down, not wishing to meet another's gaze. By the afternoon, word had got around that the exhibition was not to be missed, and by three o'clock, over 200 people had been had been to see it. By 3.30 the crowd was about to peak and the curator began to wonder if he should restrict the numbers. Humidity was also rising. Angus had deliberately kept the, the clear wet for effect and when its earthy smell combined with the sweet body odour, it seemed to, that the outdoors had come in. It had begun to rain heavily on the main street which only threatened to swell the numbers of curious people further. When a large and wet woman arrived at the gallery, she asked the curator if he could let in some air, as, as all the body heat was making her feel quite unwell. The poor old fellow was worried about letting the weather in and what effect it might have on the sculpture. But he could also sense the discomfort of the crowd. So a, lamp, a latch was lifted, a French window opened, and the gale came piling in with such strength that, poor, that the poor curator could not change his mind. Angus watched the amused faces of the people as the wind animated his sculpture. It came to him for the second time that day and more than creating a piece of art, he had unwittingly awakened a memory. Not first hand or second hand, but a sort of faint, latent image carried on a gene within a chromosome of a cell in a brain. As the wind increased and ripped into the branches, its theatrical dancing fed the memory, and the memory was realised by the people. The lovers of art had come to see the curio curiosity and found that their past had paid them a, vi a visit. They sat down to watch the wind do its thing, and one by one their eyes met as they conferred and acknowledged their emotions. The large lady had put away her fire and was enjoying the wind in her hair when she had the urge to touch the artwork. The curator shook his head. You can't do that, madam, you must stand. It's okay, shall we, Angus? You can, we can all touch it. Tomorrow we'll be sent to gather dust with all the other archives. Please, enjoy. He watched as the lady fingered the gnarled and pitted surface, her face a picture of joy. Like a fetus observed in sleep, it twitched as the dreams unfolded, and the spectators moved back to give her some room. She swirled around her flowered print dress, spinning out to the sound of a silent dance. The window into the past was closing now, as tears rolled and her eyes opened. Angus stepped forward to take the lady's hand. You saw it too, he smiled. Normally Angus could have run a mile to avoid a situation, but it seemed like the most natural thing in the world to embrace the poor woman, as she broke down and sobbed in his arms. Hungry for consolation, her eyes big. They won't take it away tomorrow, will they? The wind left, the branches were still, and Angus could not promise. Nothing is forever here, sweetheart. I think we learned that much. Already out of date, the sculpture was removed, and the floor sanitised and dried off, ready for the next big thing. The end. <laughs>